Thank you, MEC. Thank you, thank you, uh, MEC, and thank you, Program Director. One, two. And thanks, uh, Program Director. <clears throat> Let me start uh, <coughs> respectfully by uh, greeting the family of Mama Su, uh, the entire family, those who are here in South Africa <coughs> and those who come from our neighboring countries. His Excellency, former President of the Republic of South Africa, President Mbegi, uh, Ambassador Mabuza, MEC of Gauteng, MEC Mazibugu, um, the representative of the government of Zimbabwe, Ubabu Moya. Let me also recognize the living legends uh, <coughs> under the leadership of uh, the acting chairperson. Sisletambul. Um, perhaps I need to correct myself. Sisletasiminya, because I was a. Uh, I got a lecture from Bakaifas when I spoke about the uh, Sisletambul. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow compatriots. We've gathered here uh, today to celebrate, as we have said, the life and times of one of the finest daughters of our land and the continent who used her creativity to tell an African and a South African tale from the perspective of the downtrodden and the rest of the earth. As we come to terms that a great artist has left our midst a musician beyond compare, we recall the sheer brilliance and breezy brightness of Mam Dorothy Masu. As we gathered here, we shed tears for Mam Dorothy Masu, but those tears are tears of love and joy we derive from the practice of her craft and the respect she extended to all of humanity. The late President Oliver Tambo articulating the assignment of an artist had to say, the task of our artists is therefore to articulate our struggle, our hopes and aspirations using the varied forms created by their skills and talents. They can then grow into a powerful recognizable force within the ranks of our broad liberation movement throughout our country and beyond. The generation of Ma Masugu, which included many luminaries, some are here with us, others have departed like Ma Miriam Makeba, uh, Mama uh, Abigail Bubega, Brahu Masikela. No, he, I said both the living and the past, uh, the dead. She's, she's still going to be with us. All of them have lived up to the challenge of the artists as outlined by the above President Tambo's remarks. During her teens, Mama Subu composed and recorded close to 30 singles, several of which achieved major, major hit status. In the mid-50s, for instance, 
Zong Music Magazine opined that the only artist who was outselling Masugu in South Africa was an American crooner being Crosby. By composing her own songs that were inspired by events occurring in the South African townships in the 50s, she provided a lot of insight into, into socio-political issues of the township life. It was as a result of this commentary that she left South Africa abruptly. It was the radical spirit of Masubu's song and her writing that led to her long years of exile. Just like many artists of her time, her music touched on the injustice black people faced. Some of her most popular songs have been sung here, Hamba Non Sogolo, Dr. Malan, Lumumba, and many others. <clears throat> but uh, through sheer interest and curiosity, I once asked Mama, but in those years you sang about Malan, why? What were you saying about Malan? So she said that the, she was telling the world how horrible he was. But then she says in one of her shows, the special branch arrived in their numbers. And she sang the song, and afterwards they were waiting for her at the door. What say, what say, Jay? Malan, say what? But no, um, I just said uh, Malan is the boss. <laughs> and they, they said, Rehso. I said, what boss? The boss of apartheid. She never was a boss. She wrote about this song, the difficulty people live under the, 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 the apartheid government and Malan representing that government. Under apartheid, black South Africans were notoriously forced to carry a range of documents on their person. Masugu's song from 1957, Zono Zam, was recorded during the anti-pass campaign. Her work was also performed by other South Africans in exile, notably Ma Mirem Makela. It was the radical spirit and I must say this, that uh, some would have uh, confused her soft demeanor uh, to confuse it with uh, cowardice. That was the lady of resolve, steely resolve to fight injustice, whatever happened to her. Her music was always reflected, has always reflected, reflected the resistant and res the resilient spirit of an oppressed people. It is music that protested against apartheid, mourned its tragedy, and celebrated its demise. Her timeless tunes resonated so remarkably with the heart and soul of the continent. Ma Masugu clearly explicitly identified herself with African nationalist liberation struggles. She wrote and recorded in Zimbabwe and also in multiple other African languages in Malawi, Tanzania, Zambia, and so on. She celebrated African leaders with her song, Ghana. She was always a compelling performer and never failed to draw standing ovations. In 2006, the government awarded Mama Sugu, the National Order of Ikamanga in silver for excellent achievement in the contribution to music, composition, and performance. Mama Sugu was honored at the 19th APSA KKNK Africans Cultural Festival, which takes place annually in Otsworo. It broke with the tradition to give center stage to non-African mus musician in 2013 
with artist Zolani Mahola and Karen Zoid paying tribute to her. Ma continued to perform with African rock singer and guitarist Zoid, gracing various stages such as APSA VUGA showcase at the State Theatre in Tswane. On what the remaining artists can learn from Ma Masubu, Laiana said, and I quote, my grandma was proudly African. She was proud of her roots and where she came from. She has so many songs in different African languages as she really valued African traditions and customs. She told me that there was nothing wrong with singing in one's native language and being proud of their identity. So those remaining can follow suit. Close quote. She defined herself in the following manner. I was born to sing. I was born to be an African. I know Africa like I know the palm of my hand. I'm an indigenous African woman. I'm a pure African woman. This is my heritage. This is my pride. Close quote. On behalf of the Department of Arts and Culture, I wish to extend my deepest condolences to the Masugu family, her children, her grand grandchildren, her great grandchildren, her extended family, and those she loved most. May her soul be at eternal rest. Her albums were seminal pieces of work, and each added something significant and distinct to the body of our art that we can call the art of the nation and that which contributed greatly to our national culture. Her music spoke of love, politics, labor, and freedom. She was bold, confident, and produced spirited sound, coupled with a voice that could utter poetry as only the best poets could. Her words, even when uttering a devastating critique of society, could teach us redeem us and make us whole again to overcome the obstacles we are faced with. Her songs created a milieu of particular times and places as no historian could. Those anecdotes contain vital lessons of life and a message that says we who are the title deed, who are the title title deed holders of their deeds should reaffirm to her and ourselves that we'll honor what she and her generation have bequeathed to us. We must summon the courage never to disown the cause of their vision. This generation bestowed to us a sacred heritage. Her music was soulful and always out, outwardly expressed towards the people, the city, the village, and the marketplace. Her music spoke to the politics of our times, but also to all our citizens. She never failed to make the point about her Africanness. Her art reminds us the role of the artist and intellectual Ben Ockert, as, as he tells us in his book of essays, The Way of Being Free. And I quote, the, we the worst realities of our age are manufactured realities. It is therefore our task as creative participants in the universe, in the universe to, read, to redeem our world. The fact of possessing imagination means that everything can be redreamed, close quote. Mama Sugu's music, indeed, gave us the power to redream the world. She, her generation, and their predecessors, even as they were buffeted by the destructive storms of the period of the immensely violent nature of apartheid colonialism, remained loyal 
to the aspirations of African people to defend their identity and humanity and their right to self-determination and independence, to maintain and perpetuate its pernicious domination over the indigenous millions, apartheid colonialism pursued the task to obliterate our identity as a people. This generation and their predecessors, against all odds, refused to succumb to that. Their sense of integrity and courage told us to refuse to be corrupted, bought, or intimidated. They knew that they would never disown the cause of freedom and be transformed into something other than an African patriot. Through their actions, they instructed us to fight to recover and maintain our identity as a people, refusing to accept our characterization by white colonizers as a people without history and with no culture. Mama Sugu and her generation had chosen the suffering of life of honor rather than the false comfort of a Judas. Her artistic approach, outlook, and understanding of art were expressed whenever she took stage, wherever she might be around the globe. Her generation used their talents to assert African identity, pride, and dignity. In the words of Ndatejo Sicile from his poem, Red Song, I quote, moving the rhythm of a mother's love and the sad, sad eye of a father, embraced in, fix, in the fixed demand of a troubled and expectant people. From the stench of history and the fragrance of desire and purpose, softly I walk into the embrace of this fire that will ignite my song of love, my song of love, close quote. Mama Sugu was not just a singer. She was an architect of her own destiny. She was a hero of the struggle. She was a composer. She was an African through and through. And as an African, I think that it would be remiss of me as the Minister of Culture not to make a point as I sit down, that when we come to respect those who have departed, we must do that. We may be confused because elections are around the corner and we hop from one meeting to the other and end up bringing wrong scripts to such gatherings. We should never do that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Minister. On that note, may we then have now